everyone in this video we are learning the development of palate with developmental anomalies that is the cleft palate in the previous lectures we have learned the development of face with the developmental anomalies as a continuation of that we are learning how the palate is developed and what are the developmental anomalies of the palate which can happen the varieties of cleft palate welcome to this video clip palatogenesis that is the embryological development of the palate this happens between the 6th to 12th week of intrauterine life so this heading we will learn under two subheadings development of primary palate and development of secondary palate so what is primary palate and what is secondary palate the part of the palate in front of the incisive foramen is called as primary palate so here in this picture what you see here is the primary palate that is this small triangular region in front of incisive foramen so this is the primary palate we will learn its development first then what you see behind the incisive foramen this part is the secondary palate we will learn the development of both primary and secondary palate so before going to the explanations of development of palate let us see what is happening in and around the developing mouth or the stomodium both maxillary processes grow medially and fuse lat to the lateral nasal process first and then with the medial nasal process so this is the maxillary process this will fuse with the lateral nasal process this blue colored one followed by the medial nasal processes lower part of medial nasal process so this rapid growth of the maxillary process from both sides the frontonasal process will become more and more narrow due to the pressure from the growing maxillary fr processes from either side thus both external nares come close to each other and the lower part of this frontonasal process fuses and then forms the mesodermal basis of the philtrum of upper lip let us see the formation of primary palate the proliferation and fusion of the various processes around the stomodium happens not only in the superficial aspect but in a deeper plane also so the merging of these processes happens and forms the intermaxillary segment or premaxilla so lower part of frontonasal processes that is the medial nasal processes fuses with each other to form intermaxillary segment or also called as premaxilla so this triangle and the palatine component of intermaxillary segment is a wedge shaped very small triangular portion so this intermaxillary segment consists of three components labial component upper jaw component and the palatine component the labial component forms the philtrum of upper lip what you see here this will form the philtrum of upper lip and the upper jaw component forms the areas of four incisor teeth upper four incisor teeth and the palatine component is a very small triangular region that is the primary palate so that is the third component of intermaxillary segment now let us see formation of the secondary palate that is behind the incisive foramen region so the secondary palate is just the parts behind the incisive foramen region we have seen that the part of the palate behind the incisive foramen is the secondary palate and in the development of embryo secondary palate consists of primordium of hard palate and the soft palate formation of secondary palate begins at 6th week of intrauterine life what are palatine processes or the shelves from the internal aspect of maxillary processes there will be mesenchymal projection that is called as palatine shelves initially these palatine shelves are projecting downwards on either side of the tongue so this this is the palatine shelf of one side and opposite side also that will be present these two are present on either side of the tongue 
and this is the picture to explain you these parts like palatine shelf on either side of the developing tongue and again we can see the developing nasal septum and primitive nasal chambers that will be the future nasal cavity what you see here is the nasal septum and the primitive nasal chambers that will be the future nasal cavity and this is the developing tongue and on either side of tongue from the maxillary process you can see the hanging down proliferation is called as palatine processes or palatine shells on either side of the growing tongue it will be present and what you see below is the mandibular processes that will form the future lower jaw or the mandible region so in this picture also we can see the palatine shells are on either side of the growing tongue next is elevation of the palate at seventh week of intrauterine life both palatine processes ascend and attain horizontal position this happens because the developing tongue will be depressed due to growth of mandible below this growth of mandible acts as an extrinsic elevation force from below so here you can see this is the developing tongue this tongue will move downwards on either side of it you can see the palatine processes and here you can see tongue moved downwards so that both palatine shells or processes are attaining a horizontal position they are coming close to each other and the tongue is further below and in this picture also you can see so this is the picture viewing upwards from the oral cavity and the middle picture is the coronal section of the developing pal developing embryo so you can see both palatine processes are very close to each other next is palatine fusion this is the next step this will be completed at 8th week in this next step after the elevation here the fusion of both the palatine shells happen from before backwards and fusion of palatine shells happens in the pattern of the letter y first both palatine shells fuse with posterior aspect of primitive palate then gradually medial edge of either side of palatine shells happens to fuse this fusion happens from before backwards so in this picture you can see already fused the fusion happens not only between both maxillary processes palatine shells but also with the nasal septum above so what is incisive fossa This is the nasopalatine canal at the junction of primary and secondary palate so that will form the infossa and what you see here in the midline is the median palatine raphe that represents the line of fusion of two palatine processes treated into hard and soft palate respectively so the ventral 3/4 part of the secondary palate will fuse with the caudal edge of the nasal septum and this ventral 3/4 portion will get ossified by the membranous ossification and will be converted into hard palate but remember the dorsal 1/4 portion of the secondary palate fuses each other but do not fuse with the nasal septum cranially this posterior 1/4 part will undergo mesenchymal condensation to form the soft palate and also the uvula so the anterior part only will get ossified to form hard palate posterior part will remain as soft palate without ossification along with the uvula soft palate and uvula will be formed now let us learn the congenital malformations that can happen due to defective fusion of various components of developing palate So failure of fusion of these components can happen at any part of developing palate hence these varieties are the hence there are varieties of cleft palates So the cleft palate may result from disturbance at any stage of the palatine development for an example defective palatal shelf growth second delayed or failed shelf elevation third defective self fusion fourth factor failure of tongue to deepen between the processes due to micrognathia or small mandible 
The symptoms of the cleft palate are nasal regurgitation, repeated sinuses and ear infections, poor speech and nasal intonation of voice, sometimes involvement of the bone of the upper jaw that affects the child teething also. So these are the possible symptoms that can happen in the condition of cleft palate. And the cleft palate is very less frequent than the cleft lip. And more often this can happen in females. The reason is in female the palatine shells fuse one week later than the males. Which may explain why exactly this is quite common in females. Let us see various varieties of the cleft lip. So here in the first picture. This is a normal palate because all the processes have fused and all the parts of the palate have been developed properly. Primary palate, secondary palate including soft palate and uvula everything is normally formed. But same thing we can compare with this. Eh? So this is a first variety of cleft lip. In this first variety complete non-fusion resulted in the formation of a Y-shaped cleft including cleft lip also. Here the primary palate did not fuse with the palatine processes of both sides and both palatine processes did not fuse each other also. And here second variety maxillary process failed to fuse with the primary palate at one side and both palatine processes did not fuse with each other. This is the palatine process that is not fusing with each other and a cleft formed, a complete cleft form. But in the third variety here a midline cleft extending to the heart palate is seen. This is not a complete one. This is not at all extending till the anterior aspect. In the fourth variety, the cleft happened only in the soft palate. And this last one, it is the bifid uvula. Uvula is splitted. The last portion did not fuse properly. That's why uvula is splitted. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon.